Hello again, folks. K.R. King here helping you homebrew your own D&D campaign. So today is maybe one of my longest videos ever uh, because I am taking the original drawing of the Temple of the Frog map and bringing it into Dungeon Draft. And ordinarily when I do these kind of videos, I will speed a lot of stuff up, uh, you know, cut out different sections and whatnot because I don't want the videos to be as long as it actually takes me to draw these. But I had some comments where people said, hey, you know, that's okay. Let us see your thought process as you're building this map. It can be a little bit longer. So pretty much you're seeing this map created as I was thinking about it. I did speed up some stuff on texturing uh, the ground and whatnot, but I did want to, you know, talk about what I'm thinking as I'm, you know, changing this map from its original conception to modern D&D &D, uh, and the way I conceived of Temple of the Frog in terms of having a much more scaled down uh, encounters with bandits and the, the frogs and everything, uh, who the, the uh, clerics were, these temple, they're old druids that have been corrupted by this guy, Stephen the Rock. So without further ado, let's dive into the system and recreate Temple of the Frog. All right, so I'm in Dungeon Draft, and the first thing I have to do is start a new file, and I'm just going to go with a standard size. This is 48 by 27. Then I'm going to look at this to see how I need to scale this to get an accurate scale with my grid map uh, in Dungeon Draft so that when I you know, print this or use it electronically, it'll match to the size. So I go to Trace Image, and let's see here. I've got it in Media. There we go, the Temple and Ground. This is a JPEG. And when I scale this up and I look at it, the hexes on, or I'm sorry, the squares on the grid of the Temple of the Frog are 15 by 15. And these that I'm going to use are five. So I need this square here to be three down and three across to have three five-foot squares. So what I'm thinking that I'm going to do is I am going to take this drawing and I'm going to scale it up by three. Three. Here's this file. If I can just look at it. What I've got to do when I scale this is a, I'm going to use, ordinarily I would use Photoshop because I have that software package. I use it for all my videos and whatnot, but it is an expensive package. So I'm going to try to use GIMP to do this, which is a free package. So if you know Photoshop or some other photo editing program that you use, basically you're going to scale this by three. So if I say open with and I pick GIMP, there it is. What I need to do is I need to create a, and what, a new image. And this is the width and size of this current one. So I'm just gonna times that by three, times three. And I'm gonna make this a uh, transparency. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I have this new image out here. Over here, I've got this. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to transform this. And again, times three scale. Okay, <clears throat> now I have this image here. I can't see it because why? Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay, because it's, um, if I move this around, I can sort of see it. it's much bigger, right? If I copy this, go to here, paste it. Okay, there it is. And I'm just going to say yes, anchor that. Now I've got a drawing that's scaled by three. I'm going to call that Temple Grounds. Let's say times three, export that. Now I'm going to go back into Dungeon Draft, new file, OK. I'm going to trace an image. Now I've got temple times three. There it is. When I scale this and I go in here and I look at these three by three, it's the right size. 
but of course it's not going to fit on this template that I drew, so I have to make a larger template. So I'm going to go new, and I'm just going to go to the largest template that's allowed, 128 by 128. You can't do any bigger, okay? And this is a huge file. We're going to run into some issues with this when we start doing water and some filling things. The system bogs down my computer, at least. Yours might be more powerful. But when I bring this in to trace this three times, I go to 10 times. These are three by three, these old hexes. Here we have three by three. Everything looks good. So now I can begin to trace this and create a new image. All right, so when we're gonna trace this, you notice too, you've got this opacity. You can bring this all the way up here to really see this map, really see the temple, the swamp up here or whatnot. Uh, I need to like to have it a little down so that I can see what I'm drawing. And what do you start with? I usually start with the terrain so I'm going to go to my terrain brush, and I'm going to see over here at biome, I'm going to use swamp just to see, you know, that's what they recommend, uh, to see the different terrain types. This is the major type. You can see if you, again, turn that trace image all the way down, that's going to be the background effect. If you want to change that in your terrain, you go to this first one and you pick something, uh, you know, it changes everything. Uh, Let's see, I'm going to use moss as my basic thing, I think. And then you can also increase your slots, but you're going to have memory usage issues. So for now, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I have this giant map and things are going to slow down enough. So I think I'll leave that. Uh, pick something else over here. Oh, let's see. Swamp, how's that? And what might I also use? Uh, I'll say sand. Okay, so these are gonna be my four basic things. The next thing that I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna do my water here. So I'm gonna turn up my trace image. Basically, I've got water running here, here, and I'm gonna just take this all the way. I'm gonna make this into a peninsula. So we go to our water, and here is our basic color. Now we are in a swamp. Uh, and I think I'm going to turn my grid snap off for this. We are in a swamp. So maybe, you know, the deep color is something like that, something mucky. The lighter color is, you know, let's try that and just see. If you pick, you go in here and you do this and you try to go like this, see that delay? And if you do even more, you're going to get a bigger delay. So what you want to do is to use a shape. You can make a shape. Oops. Like that, and it's instantaneous. Okay. Much quicker, and then just use the brush once you've got these sections all laid out. And this is all water here. Oops. Now that looks awfully dark and you may say, I don't like the way that looks. I want this more watery, which I totally understand. So I'm just gonna. Okay, and then I can use this tool here to make these shapes and it's just so much faster than using the uh, circles. The circles, I guess because it has to calculate around there. I'm not sure why it takes so much memory, but it does. So I always try to get this. Now, if you notice in here, this is moat around here. So this is going to be water as well. So I will maybe go like this this, and this, and this. 
And one of these things in here is you've got two sets of water. I'm going to keep this moat separate. So I'm going to use this. And what I'm going to do with this, right, is it does give me a little bit of a rougher edge here like they have. And when you're doing just this little area, especially that since it already knows this, it doesn't seem to take as much time, although you can run into trouble. So you got to sort of be careful. There we go. We're going to have a bridge there, the drawbridge. Okay. All right, so there's our moat. Now we also have this moat runs underneath this. This is wall up here. I'm not going to show it there. I'm just going to go like that. So. Okay, there's the edge of that, so I'm going to just, it's actually supposed to go all the way to there. Alrighty. And then we've got it here. that little delay there if you if you went all the way down here you'd be sitting you never know when things are going to go bad now that took a little time there and i made that quite a bit thicker maybe i'll just go in and make this a little bit thicker as well all right so now i've got my water here oh i'm going to go up and do these uh, you know, this map just kind of ended, so I decided to create it as a um, peninsula. See how long that takes? A little too much for the, the, the computer kind of starts to go, what is happening here? A little bit of a delay there. I think maybe that's supposed to go like that, we'll say. And all I'm doing is roughing out the areas that uh, were made with the uh, rectangle tool, just to give it more of a and then if you want, let's say I want to go in here and say, you know what, that's too close to that. Hit the Alt key, it'll turn blue, and it'll bring back land. So if you just want to make sure that we're not in any trouble there, you know, with that moat being connected. Because if it's connected to the swamp, then the creatures in there, like the killer frogs, you know, are potentially going to be a be able to escape. Is that what they want? Of course, they can just jump out of here and go across. So I guess it really doesn't matter, but what the hell. And I'm just following the contours of the map. I suppose, see how this dotted line here, is this the shoreline, the original shoreline? Not sure, but this one I'm doing. Again, I'm re repurposing this. So what I'm going to do is go along this edge. Notice the time lag you have here. Anytime you do this on this, and then if you do the edit, if you were to do that with the brush, it would take forever. It only takes a second. This map just ended with these, so I'm going to create my own, and I'm not going to put those in there, those buildings. And again, that's that delay. Be careful. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to do some stuff in here. These are these piers out here. All right. If we 
turn off the tracing, we will see that's what we've got so far. Technically, this is supposed to be connected. I think I will actually connect that, what the heck, because um, there's going to be uh, there's going to be stuff over it, walls and things, but I think that should run under it and just give it a little bit of a rough edge like so. Okay, so now we've got our water and we've got these little, if you want to have little islands and stuff out there, they're not on the map. They can give you a little bit of realism to this. In fact, maybe I'll just go like, All right, we'll you know, why not? They came up in the process, why not kind of expand on them? And maybe something, uh, there's, that's not supposed to be there. Maybe just a little island out here. I don't know. Why not? Okay. So now I got my basic Temple of the Frog uh, land. And again, we're going to change this up a little bit here. Let's look at our map. Trace image. Okay. So I'm going to build the walls around the fortress. That, that, I mean, the walls of the temple. Building tool. Pick my flooring. These are going to be stone. And I'm going to use um, this stone here. Uh, I am going to use my snap. I want this to be pretty uniform. Even if here, when you're recreating this, even if it's not perfect, as long as it's, you know, symmetrical, should be okay. The main entrance. All right, and then we have our walls here. And up top. Hmm. Control Z, I'm just going to go half and whoop, half there. All right, and then you've got your interior temple. Um, I'm going to stick with that. Like so, like so, and then to do this circular thing, usually you start at the top, let's zoom up here, you start at the middle point here and about here, it'll be sort of accurate. Um, let me turn the snap off and try to kind of do this by eye here. Let's see. See how you want to get that to where it's coming out. It's a little goofy, right? It's, it's harder than it looks to do that quite right. See that, how it's... And there's that little bit of oh uh, there. You can edit points on this and try to delete these. Okay. I'm just still using the delete key there. But you know, it still is off from and let's look at that with nothing on there. Oops. I guess it's not horrible. All right, so there's our basic temple. And if you look, I've got it, it's one, two, three, four here, one, two, three and a half here. It's a little bit uneven. If you want to even that out, you can also argue, hey, you know, uh, people were building this, there's going to be some, you know, unevenness. Do you want the moat to come all the way up to this? I would. That's kind of what's nice about this rectangle feature. Not only is it fast, but you can get pretty close. All 
right? And then I'm going to save project files, dungeon draft, and we'll call this Temple of the Frog. All right. Boom. All right. And we see this, we have this um, set up here. And notice when we go back to our trace image. We've got these walls out here, here, along here, and here. So I got to make these. And there's an entranceway there. Building tool. Back to my stone. I should be on the same thing. Now, one thing you'll notice when I'm doing this is when I go to make my building tool, I'm going to snap to the grid. And I go like this. This water is still here. Okay. So what you have to do. I can't snap on that. No. So it won't snap it to the middle. That's kind of it. So I'm going to say Alt. Yeah, get rid of that wall. Like so. Like so. Like so. Okay. Like so. Yep. Now, of course, we have this thing here, but no problemo. We simply go turn off our snap, hold the Alt key. We can get rid of that water. Same thing over here. Alt. And if you want to get rid of those. Okay. And I believe there's a guard uh, entrance way here, a keep. I'll just turn this on so that we're always doing what, yeah, right like that. So we'll say like so. And again, if you want, you can you know, get rid of that. But it won't go to the halfway mark. And then we look at this over here. There seems to be a, uh, you know, something coming from here in a structure. Is that just a low level structure? And right now, um, that moat, I'm going to make that moat a little bit bigger. Just going to kind of go like that. And of course, I'm trying to want to make sure I don't get too much into my. All right, just to cover that. So that now I can build something, you know, a bridge and a structure across there. Okay. Now you notice this inner area here, there's this walkway we have that runs up from the beach with trees. So I think what I will do, 
It's tricky because this is a line. If we, this is where we start to use our terrain brush. So for instance, if I'm gonna have sand, like at the beach, right? Maybe I'll just have this sand follow that as closely as I can. Right? Where people have been walking. So then the next question is, how do you make this, do you put this beach kind of thing around the outsides to give it a little flavor uh, where people are walking, or is it something else? Maybe something a little, that's the sand. Maybe you do kind of that, let's see, yeah, dry grass to give the edges of this, you know, a little more flavor. The other thing that you can do is to use this blend. See how that softens? I like that soft blend on these. All right, so another thing I'm gonna do here, I think, is since they walk in this area, I'm gonna have the sand here. Get intensity a little higher. All right, this is an area that they walk in. And we'll put that, since they're walking around, the temple, there are paths that people take. Because I'm actually, since these are druids, I'm going to put some plants in here. Or some gardens. And then I have some more structures over here. I actually have, this is a thing for, uh, you know, to bar entrance to the one area that this peninsula uh, is accessible to. So I will say like so, like so. And I'll put a little guard house out here. This is the gate into the area here. That seems to be okay. And there is one here. I think there's a, like a, um, some kind of a, uh, chain fence that ran across here. I don't know if I'm going to make that there, but this will be the remains of that. Um, okay, and I think, okay. All right, the next thing we want to think about are the structures where the, you know, bandits and the sort of riffraff townspeople live, and then the objects, you know, plant life and whatnot uh, that we're going to use uh, to, you know, complete our map. And one of the things is right over here, if we look at our objects, I've got them up here. Uh, you'll see that these are the basic objects that are given in the dungeon draft. I have a number of custom assets that I've gotten. These are available. They're often, you know, pay what you can or five bucks or whatever. I'm going to add some of these. Let's see. Uh, in town, two village, village buildings. Uh, these have different, and I'm going to say accept. And what it's going to tell you is, hey, you got to save your file. It'll save it with these assets. 
then you got to bring it back into Dungeon Draft in order for it to read these in. Very important. People get assets, they put it on the list, and they say, hey, I'm not seeing them. You've got to, first of all, you got to put them in the right subdirectory. It's a whole other thing. But then you got to save your file and then reopen it. And when it comes open, you'll see there it is loading village pack, loading village buildings. Now, when I go to my objects, I have all of these new uh, items, okay, which I'm going to be using. Uh, to make this various, you know, plants and animals and stuff, or plant, not animals. <laughs> okay. So the question is, where is, with 25 bandits and let's say 50 villagers, are they going to live in this? One of the things is I kind of liked, I like this style of kind of random, crazy, weird buildings, but I sort of wonder if it would be more on this side, Right. Uh, and so it's tricky because it's like, it, how much do you follow the map here and how much do you uh, go with, you know, these being kind of ruined? Because at one time this Druid temple was much, had many more people. These were, again, the last survivors of this thing that Stephen the Rock took over. So I'm thinking that I'm going to have... Some structures, and again, uh, these might have wooden floors and wooden uh, walls, something like that. He's, you know, th and we've scaled this, you know, this is 15 by 15. Do you want to have that or do you want to have something more like this? I think what I will do is I will have some of the last... I want to try to be as accurate as I can here. Some of these are still in shape. Like so. You'll have the captain. There's no Vestal Virgins anymore. Um, and then maybe a structure, instead of this Vestal Virgins, this will be kind of a uh, the headquarters of the bandits. Maybe it's also a little bar and whatnot. And we can have a little add-on to that. This is like the largest structure. And then you have some of these uh, buildings left. And what I'm thinking is some of them have fallen into ruin. So I'm going to say... I'm sorry, I'm going to... So I'm just going to recreate some of these as I could have used, but I'm going to kind of make it a little more ragtag, right? Okay. And then it, do you want to have stuff over here? The only question is, you know, I think because it's been, you know, separated, I'm going to have these, these buildings here. So maybe I'll just draw those. And these are wooden structures, like so. But I'm not going to have any there, so I'm just sort of like, I guess I can have, you can cross at these points. So this would be your access. You'd have to come through, through this gatehouse to get to these areas. So my thought is these are going to be ruins over. So what you want to think about here is how many structures do I need to have 25 bandits and, you know, 50 townspeople? Some of the bandits are going to be living in the Temple of the Frog, uh, certainly Stephen and his associate Barnabas. Uh, what, are you going to have people setting up here? I don't think so. I think I'm going to make these gardens that the Druids maintain. But again, as I said, I think this area is being going to be cut off. People don't come from the land any longer, or from the sea, I'm sorry. So I'm going to make these ruins. So when I look at my objects, and I look at some of these, like, look at this item here. Let's close in. You know, if you put that there, you know, some of these houses that were here before, uh, let's look at this. You know, these are just, you know, ruined, uh, even though it says that they're, uh, right? Let me just, you know, like so. Along here, uh, let's go in 
here. Uh, that's about the same. Just to give the sense of, you know, this these ruined structures. Here, here, and then we have some, you know, ruined, like so. All that's left is some junk piled up. And then I can, of course, take that using this and say Control C, and I can put that Control V, and I've got another one here that I can move around. Another one, maybe up in here, and of course you can rotate that. Oh, that's growing it. Let's see here. I want to get that to rotate. Come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, and I will. Let's see if I can make another kind of ruin here. Object. What do we got here? We got a pile of junk. Let's put this here. And this on top. Okay. Copy that. And again, so you've got just junk lying around here. Up in here. Okay. And these are all just, and then I'll just, I can control C, copy that, and put another one, maybe move that around. Just the remains of remains of this village that are now ruins. All right. And then what I'll do is I'll put plants in here. This will be totally overgrown. So now I can go to tags. And then pick something like Since this has trees up in here, I will make this more tree-like. Okay, and then I'm going to make the ground up here a little darker, I think. So find a thing. What would it be? Something... I don't know. Terrain moss. So this is just overgrown, totally wild. Nobody goes there from the... Now, of course, we that doesn't mean things don't live in here. <laughs> but 
And of course, the players could try to uh, go this way, uh, enter the, the island this way, the peninsula, I'm sorry, if they so chose. You could say this had a uh, hole in it, actually. Maybe that's kind of cool. So I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to make this bridge. So I'm going to make, in fact, why not have this be a little, a little rough. This is what's left of those. All right, so our thing is starting to come together here a little bit. Uh, the question is, uh, in terms of this, uh, let's say we're going to make our terrain. Uh, again, uh, our sand. This intensity is how, so you, you have from here uh, to the building, you know, this structure here. Uh, where people come in and out, and then from out here, and we'll have, you know, paths uh, that lead. Let's turn up uh, trace image opacity. Um, let's see here. How many of these structures are going to be still left? Well, we'll just go like this. And this is where people cross, down like so. Kind of a courtyard situation here. Maybe this is kind of a little bit of a courtyard here. Maybe I'll just put another little building in here. Just to have kind of a square here. Okay, now, and I need bridges across here, object. These are gonna be a little nicer. So, because these are used still are in use. There we go. All right, we're going to save. And then the question is, do you want to have these hovels that, um, you know, that I had before accumulations of junk and stuff. And I like to just be able to control C, V. And what this produces is, you know, obstacles. Piles of junk that could be, you know, the remains of structures. Oops, I had this. I had some other things too. Because at one time, there was stuff going on here, right? There were people living here. I don't know if I'd be, have it right there. They would have cleared that off, piled that up. And that's probably good. Maybe one. Something like that. Maybe just a huge pile of crap. Like so. And then the plant life for this, 
again, uh, what I'm thinking is the Druids have, you know, gardens and whatnot in here. So when we go to our uh, object, so I'm going to say they have a, they have some fountains here. They are Druids after all. Okay, and then in terms of plants, so I like these cherry trees as kind of like exotic plants that the druids would, would be growing. What they really are, you know, in terms of this. And then, you know, palm tree. Just trying to put stuff that the druids might, you know, because of their affinity for this. So then the question is, just plants out here. Uh, we had this thing, so I think I'll just have these be trees, you know, well kept by the druids. This is just a tree-lined path. That could provide cover. I'm not going to have any in the center of the... Uh, they've got this in the... You know, yeah, I will have those because this, this, those are along these walls that grow here. Okay, and then we'll have some of these remnants. And then maybe I'll have some along the water in here. These kind of plants. Now they have them out in the water. I don't think I'm going to do that. Then I'll do a scatter on this. I kind of like the way... Oh, a little less of a... It's just a common plant in here. Especially down in among the ruins. Yeah, too big. Let's scale back. Let me just pick that and get rid of it. When you change the scale, it keeps the old scale for one click. It's kind of, because there is a sense here of kind of ruin and decay, uh, especially in these areas where these buildings are, have been falling down. And then once again, if you want, you do your terrain and you do your moss and you can just, let's, uh, Let's turn off our tracer. Is that supposed to be like that? Yes, it is. So now we have terrain moss. That gets changed every once in a while. Okay, and I'm looking at this and I'm going to make this a little more ruined because I think you have a situation here with these people. They don't take care of things that you don't have a stand of like a 
a little bit of a, again, kind of a wild area left alone. And then we have our sand that goes out like this. And I would say they may be a little couple of objects here. All right, the final thing is they have these old docks. So maybe you could have, you know, these, these sort of ruined docks. And they could serve as obstacles or something. I don't know. So now we have Temple of the Frog. And I might add more stuff out here, some items. But for now, there it is. This is going to be the village where the bandits are, generally speaking. Uh, this is, oh, I got to have a thing right there. Huh? You can't get into the, uh, hmm, it's weird. Why is it at an angle? Strange. Yeah. All right. There's how you get in. Save it. Now I can export this. And as you can see, you enter in from this side. If you go by land, obviously by sea, you have the swamp. Uh, I did not have this little island. I didn't put plants out here, but certainly you could have that. All right. There you have it. Uh, I've got the temple ready. Now, I had my composition of forces from the last time, which I might expand or contract as I think about it. The next stage is to place those forces, you know, in the various buildings in the temple. There's also the consideration of building the, you know, the dungeon underneath the temple, you know, the breeding ponds beneath that. And then if I want to do some kind of special with that ruined area that I had, you know, the former village that's fallen into ruin, if I want to have something there, or maybe some, you know, another aspect of the dungeon that's been sealed off. As you can imagine, once I start thinking about these things, I start recreating. So I would love to hear your comments on this video, uh, thoughts on, you know, what I've been talking about with Temple of the Frog, and whether or not you'd like to see something, you know, what areas would you like to see me expand upon in this uh, setup, you know, building a dungeon, thinking about where I'm putting the you know, the forces and whatnot, how the players are going to enter this, you know, two or three ideas on how the players might hear about this temple. When I, again, the possibilities are endless. So leave those comments. I love to hear them. If you like what you've seen, of course, please subscribe to my channel. But most importantly, keep playing D&D &D and tell somebody else about it.